Jim Henson's Dinosaurs series from the 90s is finally starting to make a comeback now that it's on Disney+. Plus. Seriously, guys, this show sat on Hulu unloved for years and y'all ignored it, but Disney Plus puts it in its lineup and suddenly it's like the show just became a thing again. If you've never seen the show before, it is a real treat showcasing a modern dinosaur family that are animatronics and just trying to live their best life. Dinosaurs, they're just like us. Who knew? And we have Earl Sinclair, the dad, Fran, his wife, Robbie, the oldest, Charlene, the teenage daughter, and Baby, literally just Baby Sinclair, the pink, sassy, past life of Elmo. But while the series is charming and a lot of fun, I mean, come on, their news reporter is called Howard Hand Up Me, and the show usually took normal human problems and reoriented them to work for a different species, but the show also had a lot of environmental environmentalism in every season. The dinosaurs who believed in protecting the planet were often met with a lot of harsh criticisms, and some of those environmental episodes were really rough to watch. One of the episodes had Earl turn into a tree and die, so that's nightmare fuel. But easily, the most jarring environmental episode was the series finale, so let's strap in and talk about it. Hey guys, I'm McGann, and welcome to the Fangirl, where my childhood favorites are new to you. Again, if you haven't seen the Dinosaur series, I'd recommend doing that before you watch this video, because I'm going to spoil everything. Plus, the finale takes a sharp, dark turn from the rest of the series, so this is not the material you want to start with. So go on, this is your final warning to enjoy the series before you get filled with an empty pit of sadness. Okay, you had your warning. I don't want to hear any comments about it. Season 4, episode 14, Changing Nature. This episode has Earl's employer, We Say So, building a factory that interrupts the migratory and mating patterns of bunch beetles. And any bunch beetles who actually had the nerve to show up at their own mating grounds got sprayed with insecticides. So because the beetles can't do their natural rituals, and they have very short lifespans, they're dying off off before they can eat up the cider poppies that start overgrowing and consuming all of Pangea. The dinosaurs hate these cedar poppies encroaching on every space that they have, but the We Say So Corporation is stomping their feet saying, no, our factory was for progress. Which, just to highlight how ridiculous that statement is, We Say So's factory was making wax fruit, which serves nobody and only makes the company a tiny bit richer. But but since DNN, Dinosaur News Network, has called We Say So out, they decide to respond to the problem by spraying the entire planet with defoliant. Yeah, that sounds pretty stupid, doesn't it? There's a reason dinosaurs are extinct. But before the defoliant is sprayed, Earl and Robbie end up in a conversation about finding a more Earth-friendly alternative to using weed killer. But Earl says other solutions would take too long to figure out, so the defoliant is their best and only option. And it takes all of one day for all of the plant life to be wiped out. But it's okay because We Say So has another plan to fix everything. They just need to get it to rain so that the plants will come back. And how do you make it rain? Well, you throw money at the problem, of course. So let's see, we can't buy rain and we can't buy rain clouds, but we can drop some bombs into volcanoes and that'll make some giant clouds. There are probably probably congressmen right now in the United States who believe this, so if nothing else, please think carefully about who you vote for in the future. But wrong again. The clouds actually block out the sun and send the world into an ice age. So now everybody is slowly freezing to death and there's no food and everybody's going to die, but We Say So insists that this is great because everybody's rushing out to buy their products. And wow, if that doesn't hit home after everything that happened in 2020, then you got a thick head. Long story short, companies value profits over their employees, the environment, 
and even their own customers. Seriously, hundreds if not thousands of companies are raking in huge profits by selling you poison or creating shortages so that they can up their own prices. And they don't care because nobody can stop them and greed for the sake of more greed is all that matters. And that's not me saying that capitalism is bad, but there needs to be a limit where other things are thought about besides money. And really anything can turn into a negative when corrupt people take the helm. But with the Sinclair family all gathered in their living room, Earl starts apologizing to the last surviving bunch beetle and to his entire family. But he's also certain that things will work out because dinosaurs have existed for 150 million years, so they won't just disappear. And poor baby Sinclair is heartbreakingly anxious as the news reporter says that there is no end in sight to the cold weather. But Baby's family assures him that whatever happens, they're gonna stay together as a family. That small bit of comfort quickly fades for viewers, though, as we see the outside of the Sinclair house is being caked in more snow. That became such a powerful, sobering image to see as a kid. Then, finally, we see the We Say So wax fruit factory being caked in snow, too, showing us that the planet was destroyed for something that was completely useless. In a world with no vegetation and no more sunlight, all they have left is wax fruit that can't even be eaten. So these last few seconds of the series are to make the audience question, was this really worth it? And no, of course it wasn't. Everything on the planet went extinct for the sake of making a garbage product. I was nine years old when this episode aired and I just remember being drop jawed by the end. But also being nine years old, I can remember thinking, wow, I wonder how they're gonna get out of this for for next season. It did not hit me until years later that this was the intentional series finale for the show. And before you call me stupid, keep in mind that I had already lived through the ALF finale, which was a huge cliffhanger ending, and there was no binging back then. There were no DVD box sets. There were no, hey, buy this on VHS and watch the whole thing. If you didn't have your butt in the living room at 8 p.m. on primetime, you just missed the show forever, and you had to pray that a rerun would happen so that you could catch it later. And keep in mind, there were also different networks that all had their own primetime lineup, so if you like two shows on at the same time, you were just screwed unless you had multiple TVs with VCRs hooked up to them. So to force people to prioritize one series over another and make you tune in every week, a lot of writers relied heavily on ending every episode or even season on these big finale cliffhangers so that way you'd be tweaking out and just desperate to watch what comes next. So yeah, the ALF series ended with the government coming in and taking him. And then we had Duckman where all of a sudden his dead wife isn't dead, but that's the finale episode and we never know what happened. So as a kid watching dinosaurs every week, I had no concept that this was gonna be a real ending to a series that I spent years of my life adoring. I had all the little pump action toys from McDonald's, I had the cassette tape called Dinosaurs Big Songs, and I still remember every word to every song in there, you just name it. I mean, Dinosaurs was as big as The Simpsons for a while, so I never expected this goofy, lighthearted series to end in such a heart-wrenching way. It would be like if The Simpsons had a finale where all of the main characters got shot in the head. I mean, it's just not what you want to see. When we think of a series finale, what we really want Want is to see our characters set up for good things. We want to know that they're going to be okay. We don't want to watch them suffer and die. That's why everybody hates the Game of Thrones finale. And where Alf at least got a proper series finale six years after the show ended, Dinosaurs just permanently sits out there with the most somber ending to any family-friendly series. What can you do though? Dinosaurs died out in real life. So it's not exactly like you can do a TV movie decades later and go, surprise, we ate the wax fruit and evolved. They ruined their planet and they're gone now. 
And the absolute horror of that ending is still reflected every day in human life. To a large degree, we're still letting progress, money, and loopholes dictate everything that happens to our environment. So what if we even learn to deserve a different fate from the dinosaurs? And while, yeah, that sounds really bleak and negative and not like fun movie talk, but I think that's exactly what the finale of Dinosaurs wants us to consider. Wow, this all feels really preachy as opposed to my normal video essays, but that truly is the miserable reality that the dinosaurs finale leaves us to soak in. So what can we do about it fam? I might be overthinking it, but that's literally my job. Okay, we need to kind of shake this off a bit, have some up happiness with derps, which if you're not familiar with this channel or with derps, this is just having a bit of fun at the end of the video for those of you not ready to check out to the next thing on your watch list. So let's sing. I can't bring up the dinosaur songs without singing at least one of them, right? All right, now it's got to be the baby song because I don't think most people remember any of the other songs, but... I'm the baby, gotta love me. Big purple eyes, I'm very cuddly. Especially when I hit my daddy with a frying pan. Boom, fran! I'm the baby, gotta love me. First I whack you, then you shove me. Fly across the room, I like it. I can! Mama says it's too much sugar. Daddy is all perplexed. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you never know what I'm gonna do next, Fran! Wanna see me make a rocket? Watch me put a tail in a socket. She lights up like a Christmas tree. Wee! I'm the baby and you gotta love me. Everybody! I can't do the whole song because of copyright things, but I will say since my daughter and I did that song for El Dorado, the Tough to Be a God song, which was really fun, I have been toying in my head like, man, we should do like a music channel where we do all kinds of covers, but I don't want to openly commit to that. I'm just kind of talking and thinking out loud right now. I'm not formally committed to that because frankly, it is more work than I am confident that I can keep up with with at this point, and I have no idea where I would even find the music to play in the background for those songs. I am not so musically inclined. I used to play the piano as a kid, but that's been uh, a few decades ago now, and I hated it, so <laughs> I'm not great. I also played the saxophone in band, but equally hated that thing, sold it off the first chance I got. Bought an electric guitar with the money, named it Diego, never once learned how to play. But I will recommend that you guys go look up the dinosaur music album and listen to it because it is fun. And after that really depressing video and that really super mega depressing finale of the series, I think we could all use just a little bit more fun, but not too much fun because we need to take these real world and environmental problems seriously or we're all doomed too. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. You have my heart and uh, please remember that sharing is caring because the algorithms hate me. But other than that, we will see you next time family members. Bye! What the hell? Okay, well, for some reason, that is absolutely none of my business. Two houses down, there is a tiny fire truck with, like, no way to spray water in my neighbor's driveway. So I'm assuming they had some kind of kitchen fire or something like that. Um, crazy. Hope they're okay. Hope it's not an ambulance thing. But, uh, all of our neighbors keep to themselves, so I don't even know their names over there. <laughs> that sounds kind of weird to say. Like, yeah, they live two doors down from me and somebody could have just died, but I'll never know. Even if it's in the paper, I wouldn't recognize their name. It's okay though, if it's really serious, my daughter's school principal will tell me because he grew up in this house. In country living weird. <laughs> that they can up their own prices. Prices? <laughs> like, get the fuck out of my eyeball. You don't belong here. We gonna keep playing this game? There, I've yanked you out now, what, you stupid hair? Oh, you got a cousin, huh? Those of you who don't stay for the outtakes are really missing out on my crazy. Well, family members, we're almost done, but I want to invite you to hang out with me in some other places. I'm on Twitter. 
and Instagram as my own personal self. And I have a Facebook page too, but I mostly just post photos over there. And sometimes people say, hey, McGann, I want to mail you something. How do I do that? Easy. Just click the About tab on my channel page and my most current P.O. Box info will be right there. I also run another channel, The Family. It's really a hodgepodge channel where we might post anything. Oh yeah, and I also sell shirts and stickers and stuff with the family and the fangirl logos. If that is your cup of tea, I have a link in every description of every video. Finally, if you want to help out the fangirl channel and make sure I'm putting out video essays for years to come, the best way you can help is by subscribing and watching more of my videos, whether they're new, old, whatever. Maybe even share one or two on social media, help spread the word. People who watch to the end of videos like you helps to tell the site, hey, this is a good video. We should recommend it to other people. So if you made it this far, leave me a comment of something like, hey, I made it to the end. Love ya. See you next time, family members. Bye.